Welcome to the show, Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Tonight on AMC, The Little Witch from the Black Lagoon. That's interesting. Is Norman Reedus starring in it? Well, oh, no, just Rita Repulsa. Ah! <laughs> also joining us today is the Terra. Um, I didn't exactly stay for this, but bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> Why your language, young man? Oh, Tara, you kissed your mother with that mouth? Uh, bloop. <laughs> oh, 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 I am offended and shocked and appalled. <laughs> so anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 1, Episode 7 of Little Witch Academia. Uh, episode title, Orange Submarine. And the Japanese... Submariner. Yeah, Submariner, sorry. Yeah, you so, forgot the ER at the end. Uh, my bad, my bad. Anyway, uh, <laughs> in this episode, Aku gets serious about studying but can't master the basics, even with Professor Ursula's help. She flubs test after test, risking her enrollment. So, this episode was a lot of fun. I personally enjoyed it. But before we carry on, Silver, what do you think? I agree. It's a fun episode that sort of shows Akko's weaknesses, but at the very end, also her strengths. And But at the same time, it's a lot of activity without a lot of substance. It's mostly comedy. It's mostly just you laugh at her multiple failures, and you don't get into the really heavy stuff until the end. As she feels sympathy. You will believe a fish can make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. And Tara, what about you? This episode is pretty decent for me. I mean, at the beginning, you got the usual stuff with Akko messing up, and then she's like, no, I gotta do this, and they mess up again. And like Silver said, it takes a while for, I guess you could say, I mean, he didn't, I guess you could say, yeah, the episode takes a while to kick in until a certain point, and then that's when it's like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. But it's not that long, because it's quickly resolved, and yeah, like I said, it's decent, but we'll go into it. <laughs> All right, and as for me, well, this episode was a sort of fun. I like the lesson in the end, uh, the slapstick humor, and Akko trying really hard, her best to pass all the tests. It's, it's a trope to its own, but it's a lot of fun. So anyway, if you guys are interested in watching this episode, pause here and join us when you're done. Welcome back. How do you enjoy the show? I hope you like it. So anyway, we start off the episode with a teacher telling the rules of magic engagement. Like, uh, what was it again? If you use magic to lie, you your tongue will be what you call this uh, turn to lead or something like that. Then if you steal, there's a lot of things. But one of the one that I remember is. If you resurrect a person from the death dead, uh, you'll be punished really, really hard. Was it right, Silver? She leaves it pretty vague. You you envision the most horrible, horrible punishment you'd be afflicted, and that's just the start. Oh, no. She's really going for scare tactics to uh, comply. Also, I think she just likes seeing everyone get all uh, frightened. Oh, because if the most... A little, little sadistic. Yeah. Because if the most horrible punishment you can think of is like, oh no, listen to Baby Shark on loop for ever. Oh no. Oh no. I could think of a horrible punishment. Uh, just for you, but for me, the Baby Shark thing. Uh, oh no, that song. Uh. <laughs> so anywho, while this is going on, Aku raises her hand and just asks the question, is this, this going to be in the test? And the professor's like, I, I guess probably, yeah. And Akko writes it down. And Akko is really serious about... Um, what you call this? Uh, yeah, it's really serious about studying to pass the test. And the reason why is because she's been warned by the... Um, who now? I'm forgetting. Uh, uh, snooty teacher person. Uh, let's just go with that. I It's been a while. I don't quite remember that teacher's name. Yep. So you know, so the teacher it's person. Yep. Uh, she's saying that if Akko fails her test, she'll be expelled from the school. So Akko tries her darndest to um, pass the test and whatnot. 
So she and Ursula goes to class to train. One of the few basic tests is to levitate or do stuff, which is open a window and not not. And she couldn't do it. And should I continue on or should I pause here so everyone could say their piece? Well, truth be told, all of these situations sort of follow the same rhythm. So I think it's easier to cover all the tests in the same uh, summary. Yeah, because it's pretty much the same thing from here on out until we get to a certain part. Okay, so I'm just going to fast forward for a bit and just explain what's happening. So one of the few tests is uh, Ako needs to translate bird talk to the teachers. So crows goes kaka and Ako needs to translate what she says. And then later on, Hannah and Barbara make fun of her for not getting it right. And the next scene, uh, Ako needs to repair a broken object. Ursula teaches her to do it with a potion. I wish I had that thing to fix my game console or whatever it is. <sighs> but anyhow, uh, with that, uh, Ako used the same trick in class, but her method was considered to be suboptimal or just meh. The only person that got A pluses were Lotte and uh, who was her name again? Rebecca? Susie? No, 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 no. Oh, Rebecca. Not Rebecca. Diana? No. Diana, yes, thank you. Di yeah. So they were the only two to get A pluses in class. I mean, she got a C plus, was so not bad. It, yeah, I mean, don't down yourself because you couldn't ace it. You did good, you did good. But anywho, uh, moving on. Next class is food. Uh, no, flying lessons. She failed because she couldn't fly a broom. Yeah. And you know what? It goes on and on where she couldn't... She trains or she studies real hard and fails. So I'm just going to skip to the end of this part. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just stop to the astrology lesson. Silver, what do you think? You know, it's kind of funny. You could say, oh, Norman, you, you, you skipped almost half the episode, but half the episode is just the same stuff happening again and again. They're really driving home the point that she is not naturally adept at any particular magic. I guess the most interesting thing in all of this is fine is not only a look into each character uh, as how they view things. Case in point, the uh, the young lady who is very skilled but reckless with uh, flying. Oh, what's her name? Give me a second. Red and yellow hair. Yeah, I'm trying to find her name. You carry on. They ask, well, what do you want to do when you graduate? And she's like, oh, that's for later. Right now, I just want to have some fun. Amanda, by the way. Amanda. Well, Amanda's all about having fun in the moment while every while a lot of people are, well, not focused on fun. Diana, who's always probably excelling all the time, she's probably get, just gearing up to live up to, the, to her family's uh, standards and ancestral name. Now, I will say that with the levitation spell... Uh, where she pours tea for her professor. That's going beyond being a gifted student. And then I can really say, oh, you kiss ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. You're pouring her tea. Come on. She is kissing ass. No, but at the same time, technically, that's what's expected of her in class. Like, uh, levitate teacups and stuff. <laughs> well, but also on the topic of, of Diane. Or is it Diana? Diana. Well, on the topic of Diana, why does she hang out or allow Hannah and Barbera to cling to her? Because while well, Diana's got, she's proud, but she's not intentionally antagonistic. She doesn't go out of her way to hurt someone. And yet she continually uh, hangs around or, or allows these two bullies to stay with her. And the simple truth is they're, they're not terrible. They don't have any particular talent themselves. They're mostly just clingers on. Yeah, true, true. And technically, Hannah and Barbera are subpar. Like, they're adept. That's about it. But there's nothing special about them. So why... I, I'm assuming that there's some sort of familial bond. Like, the families have always been to toadies to Dianas. And this is just continuing part of the course. Me, I wouldn't want people like that hanging around me. 
yeah, it's, it's a show, and I don't know, man. Like it's one of those cases where probably no, you don't get to use the mystery science theater argument. Just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. <laughs> I should really just relax because no, we are here to talk about this show, and we are here to look at these characters, and I want to know. Why is she putting up with these two bozos? You know, honestly, I got no answer for you because we haven't really gotten there yet. Or uh, if there's none, then we got no idea. I don't even know if they ever mentioned that in later episodes. Mm. It is a mystery wrapped in a conundrum, wrapped in an enigma. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, Tara, what do you think? I mean, I can't really say much either. It's just, you know, the usual Akko tries something, she messes up. But uh, before, she'd be like sleeping and... She wouldn't really pay attention, but here she's paying attention. She's trying her best, but even though she keeps messing up, she still tries her best. And the whole thing with the crows, I never understand, although I'm pretty sure Silver would ace that test, right? <laughs> Silver, you, you, you know what he's saying? <laughs> uh, I didn't study. What did he say, Norman? Uh, it says, oh, it says, oh, wow. You, you do not want to know. Oh, well then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweetie Boy should say something about now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silver, such language. <laughs> oh, uh, but the whole talk about Hannah and Barbara hanging out with Diana, even though they do pick on Aqua, makes me wonder. Yeah, they're picking on her, but what about your ranks, huh? What What are your ranks? You picking on her, but let's see your ranks, huh? Exactly. That's right. You don't want to show them. Yeah. It's like. Just, I know we just talked about this, but it also bugs me. Why are they hanging out with Diana? Just to like be like, oh yeah, we're hanging out with someone who's very good at magic. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with you guys. Like, the thing is, like, Akko here is trying really hard. And this is kind of an elitist mindset for the school. Like, if you are unable to perform, aha, point and laugh kind of deal. It's a good thing that Akko's friends, Suchi and Lotte, don't do that. Like, they, I won't say they don't encourage her, but the dynamic of the group is that Akko is the leader and she's the one that's inspiring them to be their best. And remember that there's something to carry on to the end. And the thing is, Akko has no talent in magic, but has a strong interest in it and believes the uh, what you will call this morals of uh, Luna Nova, but the teachers don't believe in her. But anywho, um, although I'm sorry, Norman, I I do want to just add one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Su uh, Suchi does encourage Akko. She says, "Here, drink this a lot." Really? Yes. The uh, apparently Akko is her guinea pig for for, for poisons. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even count? <laughs> Sure, you said that they don't necessarily encourage her. Well, they do, just not in the ways you'd expect. I, I guess, I guess. <laughs> now, here, drink this. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's, that's bad. Uh, anywho, oh, wow. What did you give me so well? Sodium pentothal. It's not, you can now only tell the truth. <laughs> oh, God. Anywho, anyway, uh, carrying on. Um, we go into Miss Ursula's class, and Mrs. Ursula is teaching astronomy. I, I, that's the best word I can say it. So it's mostly fortune telling, but whatever it is. Uh, we see Diana performing a spell where she, I'm not sure if she predicts the future or not, but she's reading stars. So, right, which is technically astrology rather than astronomy. Ah, astrology. My bad. Sorry. So anywho, uh, Miss Ursula is grading uh, her on the test and yeah, she's, she passed like per usual and Akko says she can do better and stuff but when Hana and Barbara just tease her, she, I'm not sure if she attacks them or what but she moves to the left and Hana or Barbara trips her and they get into a scuffle. But I think what, beforehand, Diana predicts Akko's future and she sees that Akko is, or Akko will leave uh, Luna Nova. But that's vague. Uh, when she says that, she is surprised, like she is shocked. 
But anywho, um, Hana, Barbera, and Ako get into a fight, and the snooty teacher says that if she fails her next test, she is expelled from the school. Oh no. So now, Ako is in a dilemma where she doesn't want to get expelled and doesn't want for Miss Ursula to get in trouble. So the next test is, or the next class is what, um, theory of magic or something like that? I really forgot what it's called. Philosophy of magic. Ah, thank you. Philosophy of magic. So in this class... It's taught by a fish. <laughs> well, technically, Ako just says there's nothing, there's no teachers. The class is kind of dull. All you do is stare at the fish. Uh, Su Suzy and Lotte just says that it is the teacher. The teacher is a fish. And Ako is shocked. So we get to see her in action in class. And uh, there's a student talking to Ako about the class. And she, she's cool. She's cool. So she basically explains that this is the most hardest class in school. Only students who have a proficiency with talking to animals or the like can do attend this class and long story short Arco is taking a master's degree in linguist while only while she can only say uh, Japanese weebu stuff example to say so now she's in a panic because she got no idea what's going on she got no idea how to uh, read the uh, to understand the teacher why not she is basically in hot water so she panics and she thinks you know what i'm going to bribe my way out of this so she sees the teacher offers her some bottled water that the celebrity uses and well somehow poisons the teacher oh no <laughs> and in this scuffle she carries the dead body of the teacher and somehow the teacher's alive and flops her way into the drainage pipe and leading her into the sewers. Oh no! <laughs> and I'm gonna pause here. Tara, what do you think of all this chaos and whatnot? Well, I'm pretty sure we all have that moment where we see a character that we really don't like and we just wanna, you know, give it to them by, you know, giving them a good beaten, but not that way, Silver. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> but it's like when um, Diana does the fortune teller thing, she's like, oh, you're going to leave the school. And then they're just like prolonging it. It's like, oh, yeah, you're definitely going to leave. And then they trip her. It's like, you're just asking for a fight. But instead, Akko is the one that gets the short end of the stick because then the teacher's like, oh, she failed all these classes. She's not going to be witch worthy. If she messes this one up, she's done for. It's like, that's just harsh. Like, come on. Why you got to be like that? And then, you know, obviously with the whole fish thing, Akko's, you know, you, obviously you're going to be worried about her because, like, it's a fish. You got to understand fish. Unlike, you know, a crow where you can talk to crows, you know, how uh, we're talking to Silver over here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then I'm I'm pretty sure that the teacher was playing dead uh, when Akko was pouring the water because all of a sudden the, she just jumps into the sewer it's like okay no that teacher was playing dead that's cruel this this whole school is cruel to her like this so mean well in all honesty we got no idea what kind of fish it is and then you just suddenly pour in some mineral water in it like that's gonna screw her up she got high probably <laughs> <laughs> anyway still robot well, that's it all that all that blub blub is really just her being high dude <laughs> What if we're all fishes in the great stream of life? Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Well, anywho, what about you, Silver? Well, I'm not a fish. I mean, what do you think why of this episode? Robert, why are you asking if I'm a fish? I don't know. I never see you but in real life before, so how could I not think that you're a fish? Hmm? How could you think that I am? How could you assume that about me? This is betrayal on a whole different scale. Prepare to get schooled. Yeah, I, I smell something fishy. Well, now we're just floundering. <laughs> uh, is that the sea bass you have? Uh, you just pulled the carp from under me. 
Oh boy, let's carry on. <laughs> He's gonna go on a magic carpet ride. Oh, well, that, no, was, a, that, that was a poke, that was both a po that was both a Pokemon pun and a fish pun. Oh boy. I see. Yeah, I see you indulge just for the halibut. Yeah, that, that was goldfish. That was goldfish. <laughs> but anyway, I do have to ask: How is a fish a teacher? Yeah, I agree with that. How is did, a teacher? Did she go to school? Did she? Did she have a little fishy locker? Did she have like a, spe a special motorized fishbowl going down? But on top of that, right? Like she's teaching philosophy. What? Well, I know that one student beside Akko, she gave a reason why the fish is a teacher and whatnot. I don't remember, though, because at this point, it's like, it's the usual stuff. I wasn't really this interested in the episode. <laughs> okay. But, okay, so there's a fish. Everyone's saying, oh, the the witch born to non-magical parents says blog here, but a fish is fine. <laughs> it's a magical fish. Oh, it's a magical fish. What the freaking do? You know what you do with magical fish? You promise to let them go if they give you three wishes. <laughs> I mean, if the fish like spoke a, proper English, that'd make more sense. It's like it's like the genie, but with more baiting. <laughs> oh, boy. So now I'm slowly distracted. Just, Why is one of the teachers a fish? Come! <laughs> but anyway, uh... But then... Akko's not at her best at this moment, as she's trying to bribe a teacher, and not even very subtly, I might add. She should lose points just for her blinding lack of subtlety. But at least she's trying. No, th the whole point is that you shouldn't try to bribe your teacher, especially for a philosophy class. <laughs> if your philosophy doesn't include cheaters never prosper, you're not a good teacher, because you're a fish! <laughs> Well, that's why they, she speaks fish. She goes, bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> oh, bloop that. <laughs> I mean, you can't really use Sweetie Bot for that, Norman, because he was speaking fish, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people here don't understand fish. Oh. I'm just saying that friggin' fish, I don't even get this thing anymore. So Y'all are crazy. Witches are crazy. So wait, la ah! last week we got Silver going, um, the two last weeks, we got Silver going crazy over Cat noir or lady buck boy whatever it is now we get silver getting crazy over fish wow fish yes i, I am multi i am multi talented and going insane because everything is insane because it's a fish teaching the school about philosophy <laughs> this will be so much fun if you're doing this live <laughs> oh yeah so anywho this is the point i am live i'm alive right now saying this as i go ah! <laughs> Can you imagine if this was a video call, though? Uh, true that. Uh, I'd probably uh, try to have the background with some flames. Yeah. Really get some hellfire <laughs> going on in here. Anyway, yeah. so... So, yeah. Akko was not terribly bright when she <laughs> said, Oh, I'll bribe my teacher. <laughs> oh, boy. And so there's that. Now, if the, <sighs> I honestly think that the, t the teacher... I have not cared for fish in a very, 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 very long time. And I don't know about dumping mineral water, probably because it fish, they can live in freshwater, can't they? It depends they? on what kind of fish. If it's a normal fish, like goldfish, they are freshwater fish. If it's saltwater fish, uh, you need to... Uh, there, there's a lot of things going on. Like fish are not the easiest creature to take care of. In any case, uh, I think she was just playing dead because she's like, this girl's crazy. I need to get away at the first chance I get. Oh, maybe if I just play dead, she'll run away. Oh. Okay, she's got... No, she's picking me up. Okay, to the sea! <laughs> Huzzah! Oh, so, anywho, talking about the but, seas... Oh, yeah, yeah. Talking about the thief, the, the thief that stole the fish, Professor! I'm gonna keep on about this! So, yeah. Anywho, um, Aku tell, shares her dilemma with... Uh, her friends and Miss Ursula and uh, Susie, was it, tells that, oh, uh, she's going into the sewers. Uh, she couldn't be far. Let's go into the sewers. Uh, Miss Ursula, cover for us. And Miss Ursula says, what? <laughs> she is rather passive. <laughs> it's just that, like, the way she says it cracks me up. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's kind of like that teacher who answered, is this going to be a test? Sure. <laughs> oh, boys. So, anywho, um, they go into the sewers, 
uh, all three of them use the transmog transmogrification spell and turn it into fishes except for Akko which, uh, which she turns into a merman according to Susie so uh, Akko wants to turn back and try again but Lotte says no um, you have enough power for changing back so let's not waste it so they go on a search for the teacher so while Ursula is covering for them a student comes in and she takes a, a duster and change it into a fishing lure rod no lure 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 what, is it lure or bait yeah it's lure, a lure. lure. <laughs> so all the student comes in filing in and not really paying attention to the teacher because eh. and yeah the class is about to start did the teacher came in here well another teacher came in to drop off the test and then she volunteered to stay and they both speak fish which is fascinating <laughs> so anywho while in the ocean or in the whatever it is river whatever Akko and her friends are trying to look for the teacher but Akko hears a voice for, for voice of distress so Akko meets with a stray fish and said fish says to Akko that she's lonely and she is kind of, yeah she's she's lost and lonely and she says that all her parents are MIA because well she, she got separated from them and Akko says to her friend saying you know what let's try and find her parents and uh, our teachers at the same time I mean it couldn't be that bad right and so they do so they go and try to find the teacher and they see that oh they're trapped inside a cage and i think what lote comments that no fishing or poaching is allowed in this lake so what's this doing here that's not good and as the fish is found uh, all of her siblings are there uh, Akko is given a very hard choice uh, use her power to break the cage open or leave her be so she could find her teacher and Akko being Akko says screw this I'm just gonna help the fishy because it's in my nature to do so because I am a very good person or I'm very hmm, I won't say good I, I think she's good yeah so anyhow she frees the fishies from the cage and who will come out is the teacher yay the teacher was trapped in the cage too so yay that's killing two birds one stone see Akko uh, managed to help yay so I'm going to pause here for a bit before, wait, uh, no, nah, it's almost the finishing climax. So I'm just going to power through. So one of the fishes is still stuck in the cage and it's being dragged up by one of the poachers. Akko goes up to the surface and scares the bejesus out of the poacher saying, you're not supposed to fish here and don't do this or else, yeah, you've been warned. So, with that, Akko and the rest of the gang rushes to the classroom where she thinks she's safe, but no, she's been found out and she's in big trouble. And I'm gonna pause here. Uh, Tahera, what do you think? Well, okay, so here, now we get to the good part. Well, kind of. This is where the, it gets to the interesting part of the episode because now we don't see Akko always messing up, although she did kind of mess up her transformation. And I don't know why they call her a merman, but to me, she almost looks like a starfish. Patrick. But a really weird one. Yeah. I don't know. She got the she has the legs and the arms. I swear, I thought she was a starfish. <laughs> yeah, but I think the transformation is not complete. Yeah, that's true. But then you got the, the points where, like... The, you know, Ur Professor Ursula uses a lure, you know, the fish, and the students, you don't even question, it's like, hey, Professor, you got um, a hook sticking out of your body, are you alright? And then we got one of the teachers coming in, and then the professor's like, oh, you're looking alright, and, and you know, all Ursula's 
talking fish, is like, oh, you're feeling sick. Is that why you have a hook in your body? I mean, they don't even question the hook, but, you know, again, kind of makes you wonder why the teachers are really harsh and stupid. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but then, but then after you got to the point where, um, Akko, see, they, they pretty much find the family of fish. Although you, you think that they'd see the professor through there over all those little fishes through the bars, but I guess they don't until they open the cage. At this point, you could tell like the fish really wants a family, and how could you not resist that crying fish? That Chris, that Chris, that fish is crying in tears, and obviously you can't see the tears because you're underwater. But that's the point that draws the line off. It's like, yeah, screw it, I'm gonna open this cage up. And then, boom, the professor's there. Although, what I don't understand is that even though, um, Lote, she says, oh no, you can't do that, that's your last one. And she used it, so how did she turn back into a human if that was her last one? Because Lote and Susie probably did for themselves, how did Akko get turned back into a human? Hmm? <laughs> you raise a really interesting question. Got no idea. Maybe the fish teacher has magic? Who knows? I mean, if the fish teacher doesn't have magic, then I would like an explanation on how the teacher did that, because it's just a fish! I don't know. Anyway, Silver, what about you? It's a, it's a fish! <laughs> She's a fish! <laughs> but yeah, I would assume she was the one to turn Akko back. Uh, now, I can answer Tortera's question about no one commenting on the hook. Everyone knows that at some point a person develops an interest in piercings. <laughs> so, you know, because, you know, She's a fish! <laughs> But once again, my friends, we are tweeted to the powers of the Oral Macacomobos <laughs> as we have the return of the Fowers. The Fowers that will do us all. Now, baby Totawa, have you done your home's work? <laughs> do you uh, understand the word that I am speaking to you, man? No, I don't speak crow. Uh, oh, man. This is just a fail, man. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you got the fow you got the Fowers going into the water now because they're fishy Fowers. And this only proves one thing, that their Sosama, Sosama Stone, that they say they're so proud of, is really just a shard of the Orakakamolos. <laughs> we'll make furries out of all of you. Boys. Anyway, can you answer the little? Anyway, uh, I will say, yes, you can't see the little fish crying because, well, there's water. Of course, that also means there are other things you can't see fish doing in the water. Case in point, as Archer said, fish... <laughs> In it. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> now it is funny that Akko is able to use the opening spell with full effect because this is something she genuinely cares about. You have to get her in real stakes. Conceptual does not work it on her. And that just shows that Luna Nova is not a good testing ground for talent then. The standardized testing works well for some, but not always. And you would let a talented student slip through the cracks because she doesn't meet one criteria. And yet, I feel the need to emphasize this, you'd still accept a fish! <laughs> a fish that presumably doesn't have her wand handy, and that's why she can't just magic her own way out of the dang cage. I'm sure it's all good. That's not good, because she's a fish! Norman, stop trying to defend the fish. No, no, man. <laughs> that's right, we won't call Finn on this. <laughs> uh, but anywho, carrying on. So... I, indeed, I am. <laughs> uh, you got something more to say? Go more? Uh, I could scream it's a fish a couple more times, but no, not really. I mean, it's just fun to see Akko finally succeed. True that, true that. Anyway. But she's still a far away. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anywho, carrying on. We see Akko, Susie, and also Lotte, and also Miss Ursula are in the principal's office, and they're getting punished. Uh, Miss Nudie pants here. Uh, tells everyone that Akko here is a disgrace to the class because she does not accept the best of Luna Nova. But the positive side of this is uh, Miss Fish Professor says that Akko gets an A+. And she enjoys uh, what you might call this swimming in the lake for a bit yeah. stretching out her fins and whatnot. And all this time Akko understands what the fish teacher is talking about. And while this is happening, Miss Ursula praises Akko because she learned how to speak fish within a few hours of the transformation. So that has sorry, that is very impressive. But the bad side is that Akko was discovered 
and there's a lot of chaos. So uh, Miss New Depends wants to punish Akko and exile her while Miss Ursula says no. Uh, what she, Akko here is trying her best. She is doing her hardest. She, she tries her darnest to stay in school uh, and practice all her spells but and, and each time she fails at it but she still practice and practice and this and doesn't let that take her down and she encourages others to do their best and stuff and let's just say that miss ursula here really really says a lot of good things about akko and encourages her and stuff then uh, while miss nudie teacher pants is getting the beat down or the smack talk by miss ursula there's another teacher that pops in telling or asking about uh, stuff like there's people asking if uh, the merman was a student at luna nova and the principal asks uh, what's this about and say she says that oh um the fish that Ako safe was a rare and endangered species of fish and the principal here says oh yeah she is a student of Luna Nova and she is the best and whatnot like uh, I forgot the proper phrase but the principal is for Ako to remain at the school and with that the principal is shocked and oh, sorry not the principal but uh, miss Snooty Benz is shocked by the revelation and Akko still did a bad so she needs to be punished and her punishment is to okay I got no idea what this means guys like wh what was the punishment again basically cleaning up the room under the Snooty teacher's supervision but she says like when you live under my roof like she's the vice principal something like that uh, they may be cleaning up the vice principal's room. I thought they were cleaning up their bedroom. Yeah, like it looks like in their bedroom. Well then, there you go. I, not really sure myself. Probably their punishment is just to clean their dorm room. Okay, let's let's do that. So, Miss Ursula walks. Well, Miss Ursula gets punished too, so she has to clean the room too. For God's sakes, uh, and Akko says thank you so much to Ursula because uh, she never had anybody believe in her so much that she is happy about it so yay they're 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 good buddies and with that episode ends so silver what do you think overall thoughts it is a fish my man it is a fish being taught teaching flowers and that and somehow they allow that for a into the school with the fish they play they play is whack man Okay, but seriously, I think the, the biggest thing that comes through here is not Akko's mixed talent. That's something that's on display almost every episode. It's the respect she has for Ursula, who she says to her, please tell me you're not, please don't say you're disappointed in me. It's like the snooty teacher and, and all those other brats, they, they don't factor into Akko's self-confidence. But if, but if the one teacher she truly respects thinks poorly of her, I think that would break her. So that's a very that's a very telling uh, thing. It's a great symbolism of the or development of the student mentor relationship between them. Plus, it was just fun to see Ursula unload and assert herself. True, that like that was fun. That like that, that explosion that she did was, yeah, like shows her who's boss. Now the funny thing is, in there were points in this episode where it showed both the dwindling influence of the school and the outdated perceptions of the school. Uh, they mentioned that with repair work, people say magic is no longer efficient. And like, personally, I don't understand that. You just do a couple drops of potion, say a word, and it's fixed. That's way better than hours and hours of repair work in my eyes. But also during one of the transmogrification or transfiguration or alchemy, they, the tech, student she transforms a block into a into a morphine robot complete with transformer sound effect <laughs> or close to it or close to it legally distinct <laughs> legally distinct and the teacher says oh that's nice but next time turn it into something more valuable it's a transforming robot but technically, it doesn't get much more valuable than this in alchemy, you tell when me when you do something you, you turn like what uh cop 
what was it? Coal to copper to gold, something like that. I, I forgot. But you let yeah, lead into gold. gold. So yes. uh, that is valuable. Like gold is valuable, or stuff like they, they want to do stuff like that. In this scenario here, what? Oh man, I forgot the character's name. But what she did is uh, turn lead into a robot. Awesome. A robotic lead. She turned lead into yeah, awesome. It's a leaded robot. If she turned it into a golden lighter, a uh, gold light hand, that would be much awesome. Uh, Robert, I'm sorry, but your argument is invalid. She can make Optimus Prime. Yeah, but if she made golden light hand, that's something else. Yeah, I mean, that, you just throw the world's economy into, the, into chaos if you do that. True, yeah. <laughs> But you make a transformer. But Luna Nova has very rigid views on what should be, and while Akko's the chief uh, representation, as she's constantly looked down upon for her non-magical uh, heritage, the truth is all the students are held to this outdated and sometimes detrimental view. Though I will agree that the that if you don't fly safe on a broom, you shouldn't fly at all. There's a there's a time and a place for that level of showboating, even though it does represent great skill. True, but with great skill comes great responsibility. So she knows how to, sorry, um, Amanda knows how to fly, but she doesn't know how to respect it. Like I mentioned before, great power, great responsibility. So when you're flying and showboating, you're endangering others around you. So dog point, yeah, I agree with that. Well, they dog more than a point. They dropped her down two grades. Can be helped. But I guess that's my overall thoughts. It's a fun episode, but at the same time, the repetitive rhythm of it all can uh, take away some of the fun. It's like, okay, we get it. She's not good at these things. It's a very monotonous tempo. That I do agree. Anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? Uh, this episode was kind of meh for me. I mean, at this point, it's pretty much the same thing as always. Akko is either not paying attention or she is paying attention, but is trying hard and she keeps failing, and then she gets herself in trouble. But for this one, it goes off for like ha half the episode. And then by the time we reach half the episode, that's when the plot really kicks in with the whole, you know, our fish, our profession's a fish. <laughs> and they have to find her. And it's like, that's basically half of the episode. We just watch half the episode of the same thing. And then the, the other half of the episode, it's something new, kind of. <laughs> That's why, I don't know, for me, it's just meh. I, I liked it, but didn't leave a good impression on me. Mm, all right, all right. And as for me, uh, I, I agree with you guys. Like, the half of the episode is just setting up the fact that Akko is not good at magic. The problem is, we've already seen six episodes of this where she's not great at magic. She can't even fry a broom. I, I say that she's getting better from six episodes ago because at least she now can perform some spells but the second half of the episode is the part where things get fun because we get to see Akko you Akko re reusing a previous spell she did which is the metamorphosis and then we get to see her use the open crates spell opening stuff spell I, I forgot what that spell is but she gets to do it and Silver points out something very interesting where Akko, when presented with a threat, Akko can perform magic. But when she is presented in a test, she can't. Like, she doesn't have the know how to do so. And this brings the theory of is Akko's magic tied into her emotions or whatnot and stuff so that's something interesting that i hope that they address in the future i hope but in overall uh the fish scene was fun akko getting to speak fish after that would be is interesting but i have a strong feeling that it will go nowhere in the future but overall it's all good it's all good i know it'll come in handy when she's fishing for a compliment oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy so anyway uh silver what are you going to do next week well, I think it's time that we end a few things. It's time for the end of the end. The final, final part of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Wow, oh, I'm not even ready. Well, actually, not the final final. There's still the last problem. But. Yep, yep. 
So next week we'll be going for the close to the end. What was it again? I forgot. Uh, what was it, Silver? The end of the end. The end of the, the end. The end of the end. This is the title, really. That's the yep. The end of oh, the end. Wow. Mm -hmm. Season premiere was the beginning of the end. This is the end of the end. <laughs> uh, the ending of the end. Huh. Yes. The the last problem is the after the uh, end. All right. So, yeah, that will be next week's thing. Uh, we'll do it in two parts. Uh, part one, part two. The last problem, we'll discuss things about. Like, we'll see how it goes. What we can promise you is the ending of the end. Yes, that we'll, we'll do. So, wow. Uh, in all honesty, guys, reviewing ponies with you for almost a very long time has been really amazing. Like, you know, I'm going to hold my tongue for that a bit like uh, emotional getting tearing out uh, so anyway silver uh no i have to open this and say stuff okay anyway uh, if you guys have any questions concerns, or suggestions for the show you can contact us at gmail.com you can also reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at mbs show and my personal twitter account is at norman sanzo silver way can the good people find you or you can find me lots of places on both DeviantArt and Twitter. You can find me under MLP Silver Quill. You can also catch me on YouTube. Uh, just do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, and I shall appear. I do. I'm starting live streams on Fridays, just to, as I work on graphics or Patreon uh, reward tiers, and I hope to keep doing that for a good. Well, I hope to be swift but productive and entertaining. And you can find me on the Crestia Daily, where I will post comic reviews and editorials on Wednesdays. And if you'd like to support my channel and videos, you can do so through Patreon or through Kofi. Just do a search for Silver Quill. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. Silver is awesome. Live streams and why not Patreons and the Kofi. Give him three bucks. <laughs> so anyway, um, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they can just simply do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page and my Ko-fi page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so. Anyway, um, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also Master Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of your show. See ya. Ha! Bloop! This episode has gone to the fishes. And to the crows. It's for the birds. Oh god. Oh god. Not a lot of Pokemon love. <laughs>